treat each other as well, men and as human beings, bro. So I know that your time is very precious. So thank you for allowing me to come down here and sit with you, bro. 100%, man. I, I appreciate you, you know, thinking to have me on the show, man. 100%. No, I appreciate it, man. You know. Sam, you were, were you born in L.A., raised in L.A.? What, what, what's, what's the background for, for yeah. Brother Sam? Yeah, born born yeah. here in L.A. Um, my pops is from Africa. Yes, sir. I think he came here, he came to New York when he was 17. And then um, I think he came to L.A. when he was like maybe 20, 21. What was it like just like growing up, man? Because, you know, th there's a lot of things that that's in the household, you know what I'm right. saying? And, and plus, with you know, the family being extremely rooted. What was it like growing up for you, though? Um, growing up was good. Um, you know, moms and pops was together a um, couple years and then split. Mm -hmm. um, so for me and, uh, and bro, we was really... Our whole childhood was probably with moms yeah. at a granny house. Okay. And then pops, you know, on the weekends or every other weekend. So childhood was good. It was tight knit with grand my grandma, my grandfather on my mother's side, and um, my mom, you know, my uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just. So you, yeah, it, it was good, like what we call real family structure. You know, 100%. Yeah, man. Yeah. So with, with good family structure, man, was there always music kind of in the household or? Yeah. And if it was, you know, what kind of music? Yeah, 100% oldies. You yeah. Know, Grandma, Al Green, Marvin yeah, Gaye, you know, my mom, uh, 94.7 away. Yes, sir. 100%. That was... Now, Sam, are you the oldest when it comes to yeah. brothers and sisters? Yeah. All righty. And, and what's the breakdown? Um, I'm about, what, 82. I'm three years older than my, than my brother. And my sister, I'm like, maybe like 10, 10, years. Like 10 years old, yeah. Was it, and just in the household, cause like we grew up, man, it was seven of us as mm -hmm. far as kids, single parent though. My mom took care, you know, took care of us, but you know, we did everything in house. We didn't have 5,000 channels. Right. We didn't have money. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Was it kind of the same with you guys just kind of in the household where you understood the family dynamic and, and were y'all always tight with each other? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I think, uh, me and my brother, we used to, uh, sleep in the living room with my mom's <laughs> yeah. in the same bed at my grandma's house. Like we didn't have a room. Um, so we was tight knit, you know, moms on it, working, uh, making sure. And then she saved up some money and uh, bought a house like maybe two blocks down. Mm -hmm. um, a couple more than two blocks on 60th Street, but really like five minutes drive from my grandma's house. So when uh, she moved out in, in, into her house, then it was me, my mom, and my brother. Right. And then she had my sister. And then so now we in the household, you know, See, it's, it's a little, little more struggle because it's moms right. yeah, got man. bills and doing things on her own. But yeah, we was definitely, we had to make do. How old are you around that time? Um, I think I may have been like, maybe like, I was going, I was in the fifth grade. Hey man, fifth grade, about 10 years of age, man. You know, at that time, do you notice the struggle? Uh, probably not, not at that time, but when we moved over there and then you know, it's, it's moms on our own, we start noticing it. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're going to high school. Yeah, man. Uh, excuse me, you're going to junior high, sixth grade, and then now you want the new Jordans, you want the, you know, you're seeing everybody else, what they have, and so that's probably right around the time where you start realizing, like, oh, okay. We don't have it. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. Did you always know that you wanted to get it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, early on, huh? 100%. We was, you know, we was young, sixth grade, flipping quarters. Mm -hmm. Shooting, uh, shooting uh, uh, free throws for dollars. Yeah, so you so that saying? hustle had always been in in your in your kind of in your bloodline. Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, you know my mom, you know, was always trying to look and, and put us in a, um, a positive situation. So she had mm -hmm. um, found like a magnet school, oh, uh, okay. a medical magnet. Uh, it, it happened to be in Watts. Mm. So she telling me it's a medical magnet. So I'm going out there thinking it's a medical magnet. It was like 10% of the school was medical magnet. Right, the other right. 90 was, you know, the public school. So it was in uh, Markham Middle School. Yeah. So, you know. So were you in the magnet program or yeah. she told you that it's a, there's a magnet school? She said it's a magnet school, but I'm in the magnet it, program. Right, okay. At the school. So had you been studious growing up? 
Yeah, we was, you know, I was going to school earlier, probably, um, my mom was working at Kaiser um, uh, Permanente. Mm -hmm. So I was going to school, I was going to one of the schools by- Which one, on La Cienega or mm -hmm. which Kaiser was she there? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe so, and then so I was going to school Nevadans are struggling to afford housing, but Senator Jackie Rosen voted to raise taxes on working Nevadans, making it harder to get by. And she voted for the Biden-Harris spending spree that made everything more expensive. Tell her to fix her inflation disaster. Firehouse subs, hook and ladder, jingle take three. Hook and ladder, hook and ladder. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Carte Singer. Okay. It's over there. So the change from there, from yeah. fifth to Markham, sixth, you know, we, we had to we had to learn pretty quick, but it was good. Like, you know, learning, hustling, yeah, man. making sure if we wanted the kicks, we got them. Hustle came to the same school also. So that was like the, uh, that was like the ground to, you know, make, make sure that we kind of knew how to get what was, we needed. Early on, was it a... Could you see the responsibility of being the oldest sibling early on? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And what did that consist of? I think um, just, you know, trying to make sure that you lead by example and then also probably being overprotective. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But once we got to a certain age, it was like we were twins, damn near. Like right, right. when you get to a certain age, it's like he, he, he dealing with the same things I'm dealing with. It's not like older or younger. It's like we we on the same level. He going, you know, sharpen my steel, and I'm gonna try to yeah, you know, sharpen also. So you and Nip had always been extremely close. Yep. Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah. percent. Same with like like me and my brother Mouse. Man, we were, you know, I mean, if if you saw one, you saw the other. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot <clears throat> that I learned from my older brothers. Like Keith was my brother that really introduced me to music. Mm -hmm like looking at notes and looking at credits and listening to certain sounds and not knowing that I was paying a tuition into the school of experience right. for the profession that I'm in now with loving music, knowing how to talk, knowing how to go beyond mm -hmm. what, what I'm listening to. So that was like kind of a, almost like a finishing school for me. Early on, did you know, and when you look back now, did you know that you were paying a lot of tuition into the school of experience with you know, flipping quarters and, and making dollar shots and things of that nature? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, when when we was going through it, definitely not. But I mm -hmm. think in hindsight, we both kind of um, appreciated that we had to kind of like figure it out on our own. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we gained that edge young. So, you know, when we was in high school and then got out of high school, we was able to just really get to it and adapt in a way that a lot of our friends that had or not able to. So definitely um, in hindsight, you know, we always appreciate the struggle. Man, tell me about the, like when you guys do kind of go back home and see where, where Pops is from. Mm -hmm. what, what was that journey like? And, and about how old are you around that time? Yeah, I think uh, that was 2004. So mm. for me, I'm, I want to say maybe like I'm 22. And um, Hustle was probably 19. Did you want to make that trip? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, you know, the backstory, my, my father was, um, you know, always telling us, like, I'm going to take you guys, mm -hmm. take you guys home. So it was always in our head. But, you know, due to circumstances, we never we never end up making it out there. Um, and uh, at this point, I'm on the run. Right. Um, or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I need to get, get out. I had a couple dollars. Um, and so... Shit hit the fan a little bit. I'm like, I need to get low. I immediately just popped in my head, like, all right, we this the this the perfect time. This is it. Yep. So I hear pops like, hey, pops, get the tickets. Right. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. hey man, and when you say you're on the run, man, like, I want to talk about also like like neighborhood sound. Mm -hmm. You know, the 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 hustle part of you right, as right, well. Right. Because you you know how they say, man, I'm my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. That was that was you, right? Early on, I think I think I'm just uh, you know, honestly speaking, man, I just tried to do my part, mm -hmm. um, hustle, you know, really, a lot of the things that I got into or opportunities that I seen was from my bro, right, from little bro, like you know, he was always, um, you know, things were he was sharp and he always seen opportunities, so we was always hustlers, but he would always come up with and we'd be like, huh, and then he'll put me on it. And then I just 
trying to take it to the to 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 my level that I could take it to and him also. So we was both um, you know, we was both doing our thing and I think for me it was just how can I add value and you know, to speak on what you're talking about music, he always had a love for music since he was young mm -hmm. and um, you know, we would have money, he would just go and spend it all on, you know, source magazines and this and, and buying CDs and I'm like, bro, save your money, but that was his passion, and um, moving forward, when we get older, you know, when you we, when you don't have you 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 want to get money and you right, want right, to get right. to it, but it comes to a point when you are getting money, what's the next level? Yeah, and, and you know, what do you do with it? And I think he had the vision, and he was like, look, this is what we gonna do. You know, this this is what I'm doing. This is what I started. You know, this is the label. He had the books. <clears> on, you know, Master P did it like this. This is how we gonna take what we doing in the streets and. And so that really gave me the direction um, um, to like have something to go but to. But you to had already in. been doing your thing, but kind of away from music. Yeah. And, and not to dime anything out with that, because I know that it was like the bootleg CDs, and, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was that a, a great hustle for you as well? Yeah, 100%. I think at that point for me, it was like the new uh, dope game. Yeah. Um, it was new. Nobody was doing it. Uh, the, the 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 profit margin on it was like shocking. Couldn't believe it. Like, so Sam, what was it? It was CDs, mm -hmm. DVDs. Yep. And, CDs, and DVDs. It a, you know how people run into you know the barber shop, right, right, somebody right. selling something. Right. Was that probably something? But you were doing mass distribution. Yeah, I think it started off. It started off just hustling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, back in LA, you know, that's how it is. Uh, that's how I used to be. See people on the street corner and supermarkets and food for less in the parking lot selling CDs. Yeah. You know, I used to work at a restaurant called the Bayou Grill mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Inglewood, and I was right there cooking, and then I was at the counter. So mm -hmm. I was the young dude. My brother worked there with me too. Mm -hmm. I was the young dude at the counter that would, uh, all the hustlers, all the niggas selling dope, everybody would come through and they would see me back there, you know, tighten, tighten me up, give me some game, I'll observe a lot. So anybody coming through the Bayou Grill to have anything. Right now, nearly one million independent voters are locked out from Nevada's <laughs> closed primary. But we can change that with question three. Question three opens our primary to all registered voters. Vote yes on three, so everyone's vote matters. For sale, I was the dude behind the counter with a wad of money buying it, so from anything, you know, not to be speaking like that, but niggas that had pounds and had this and had that, I'm buying it and trying to flip it right. at the spot, you know. And uh, the chip phones, the, the, well, the phones at that yeah. time, they was going, I'm buying, how many you got, 15? Give them to me, and, yeah, then, I, and then I'll have them. And so I was hustling there, and um, and my brother had put me on a CD game. Mm -hmm. So I would have the CDs there, and I would have whatever I could have there. And um, eventually one of the guys in there came in, and had the, uh, the DVDs, just right when the DVD burner came out. Right. <laughs> you know, I think the DVD burner was like $700 for one burner. And so he had the DVDs and people was just transitions from VHSs. Mm -hmm. Really nobody had DVDs in their household. So he kind of put me up on, on, on what it was and he's selling them for $20 and he's making them for a dollar. Oh, and so I'm like, oh. So you're right. looking at that profit margin like, shoot, it's better than any other game right now. 100%, 100%. And that's how I got into that. And then it just, you know, took off like crazy. I used to be, you know, I had a spot on my off days. I used to be making eight, nine hundred a day. Then people were come you still through. trying to keep the job? Yes, yeah, I, I was Why? still working. Uh, that was my sister Pop's uh, oh, okay. uh, uh, restaurant. So and I was kind of like one of the main ones in there. I felt like keeping it, you know, right, keeping right, it afloat. Right. So I didn't just want to. <laughs> but it came to a point where. It was too much going on, too much traffic. Right. Because everybody to would be hitting me on my off, like, where you at? I'm like, pull up, you know, and so right. I'm in the back. And um, they end up, you know, telling me, like, hey, you, you, you can't be doing this yeah, up like here. All these customers, nobody eating. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I said, like, buy something. <laughs> you know, so I end up having to um, part ways and just full time, seven days a and week. And then you going. Yeah. Going even more so. 1,500, 2,500, 3,500 a day, seven days a week, nonstop all day long, then I had people buying wholesale from me. You know, I was at, I used to be at this Vines parking lot in Inglewood. I used to have a line looking like McDonald's line. People just, I'm in the trunk, 
you know, but that's the, that was, you know, if, for, for in hindsight, looking at it, that was God blessing mm -hmm. me with an opportunity mm -hmm. that um, was rare. And everybody used to come through, the, the people I know, like, hey, bro, this shit is crazy. Like, we see you. you just, I just watched you make, like, four, five hundred dollars in ten minutes. And you out here all day, every day, seven days a week, man. This shit don't happen. Don't stop. Don't take no lunch breaks. Don't. Mm -hmm. This shit is. This shit is. This shit is. It's different. So, and this is all cash. Yeah, all cash. You know, I used to, have, I used to walk around. I have a sweatpants with zippers that I made. I used to have the 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 the, the twenties and the fifties uh, and the hundreds in this pocket, looking like this. Mm -hmm. I used to have the fives <laughs> and the tens in this pocket. That's the change. And you just be in there. Hey, man. You know how sometimes when we caught up in it. Did you ever think about this could be over? Yeah, I think yeah. Um, I think my goal, especially once I start making as much as I was making, I'm like, all right, I'm trying to peel a, a million out of this. That's why I'm there seven days a week. I'm not taking no breaks. I'm there 20 hours a day. I'm going burning my, making my... my uh, so by that time, did you have multiple burners? Yeah, we went all in. I got 27 stack burners. I got other people burning stuff for me. I'm, you know, it's just taking it to the next level. We wholesaling. Um, just trying to get to that level and, you know, people also, I'm in, I'm in somebody hood, mm -hmm. I'm getting money, they seeing it, so those niggas coming up there trying to rob me, I'm up there with a pistol, bulletproof, I'm, I'm, I'm in the rain with pneumonia, <laughs> with, a, with, a, with, a, with an umbrella, yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm looking at if I'm not there, I'm losing 2500 or, you know, 1500 on a slow day, so, you know, everything happened for a reason and um, the only thing that could have stopped me from being there seven days a week right. was, you know, them coming in and trying to, um, and Motion Picture Association ended up coming in and trying to- Damn. Yeah, coming trying to blitz and trying to put a, uh, open up a case on me. And so how do they find you if you're, if you're in the parking lot and you, and you can ghost out? Yeah, they I, found you though. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it was like cat and mouse after, after a while, like every day police would pull in Police would pull in, I used to have the lookouts, you know, they'd be like, Sam, so I'm, I slam the trunk and just go inside. It's lunchtime when the police come and then they come back out. And, but eventually somebody probably called in or did something where they start investigating. Motion Picture Association came out, they had like a squad. And, um, you know, then they blitzed. I end up, you know, tussling and getting away. Even then one of my partners that I know, he was a uh, sheriff. He's like, hey, look, it's some, it's some new shit going on. They, they're getting task force, and if they, if the motion picture come out, they open the file on you. Like, did they take pictures? I'm like, yeah, they were snapping pictures of license plates. He's like, oh, they coming. Damn. They open the file on you, they coming. So that's, that's what led to, I'm like, oh, I took everything out the houses, wherever the addresses was at, granny's house, mom's, took the bread, buried the bread. Yeah, yeah, you know I know you. And how much did you bury? Buried probably like 250. In cash. Then, yep. And then when you buried at 250, do you get popped at at, at that time? Mm. Did, did you get popped for any of the copyright in that? Yeah, I got I got arrested one time, belt out. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, so now I'm fighting the case, and then um, now I'm back in. Um, you know, take a little minute out of my spot. I'm still, you know, trying to get the bread, get get, get to the money, but. Mm -hmm. Looking, the spot kind of quieted down. My people like, hey, the police stopped coming through here, so then I'm back at the same spot. So when you were saying things were hot, you was talking about that that hot, not neighborhood hot. Oh, no, 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 no. Just no. that CD and yeah, hook. Yeah. Okay. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. This is America's border czar, and she's failed it. As far as like me needing to uh, to feel like I need to get up out of there, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's because I felt like it was an open, a uh, case on me. Yeah, man. That was about to hit the, the, the house and, and, and the spot was all like, they going through there every day, the spot, the location I was at. So I'm like, all right, it's time to go. Like, so you bury the 250 and then you go to Africa. <clears throat> yeah. How long are you in Africa? Uh, we in Africa for like two and a half months. Oh, so, so you had it. What was that experience like? It was crazy. I think, um, you know, I had, I had to, we had to wrestle uh, Nip to go with us. Right, because he didn't want to go. He was money. Nip with you in the, uh, when you were doing the CDs and DVDs and no. everything at a distance? And Nip was doing his thing. You know, right. he was, um, he was hustling. He, he was, he was getting money a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. He, he, you know, he put me up on that, that, um, that CD thing a long time ago when he was in, uh, when he was in high school. Mm -hmm. He actually built the computer. Young, with the burner in it, and was showing me. I was like, man, he's bringing backpacks full of uh, equipment. 
He stole uh, computer parts. <laughs> yeah. And then he bring it in the bedroom. We share the bedroom. I'm like, bro, get this shit up out of here, man. I'm, I'm clean. I, I, I want my shit clean. Right. I'm like, get this junk out of here. I'm building the computer. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. You building the computer. <laughs> so he built it and that motherfucker was working. And then he stole a CD burner. He got one and he put it in and he showed me. And he, t and, uh, he came back, I think, one day from high school with like $300. And so this is the time I'm flipping burgers still. I'm making like 60, 70 a day. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I made 300 today, man. And I'm off of, off the of CDs. CDs. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the news. He was telling me, I go to Napster, I get it before mm -hmm. it comes out. I got a list. Then he showed me these lists. He's like, I got another three, 400 orders that I'm burning today to get to school. So I was just, now I'm like, I'm like, all right, show me. And yeah. so now he showed me everything, and you know, that wasn't junk anymore, huh? Not junk, and you know, yeah. he, at, at this point he was he was still kind of shorter than me. So I'm like, all right, that's mine. Right. I took over the. <laughs> so he was mad. We arguing back you and take forth. Take over the enterprise. I'm taking over this burner for a minute, but no, I always joke and laugh. Like man, he put, he put, any any hustle we was ever on, me, everybody, our friends that we grew up with, you know, bro, bro was the visionary and, and brought it and to the from team from an early age. From an early age, man. Early age. Damn. So when. When you see that there is this lucrative thing that can go on and Nip is already on it. Right. And you take it, you say, man, it went from, you know, from trash to treasure and it becomes your thing. Right. You go for two and a half months to Africa. Mm -hmm. You bury the money before you bounce. Yeah. You come back home. Yep. You And where was the money buried at? In my mom's backyard. In the mom's backyard. Did you see that on like some movie or shit, some shit or? Um... Probably growing up, but I think for me it was like, you know, we in the hood, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I don't want nobody when I'm gone breaking in the house and uh, stealing the money or breaking into mm -hmm. Granny's house or even if the police come, right, and hit the house when I was. So my thing was like, man, what do we, what can I do? So it's immediately uh, I'm finna get a shovel. You know, it took a lot longer than I thought. I'm trying to dig <laughs> as deep as I can without sweating and passing out, but I, I gotta probably like. Got six, seven feet deep. Damn. Rolled the motherfucker what safe was, in there. What was the money in? It was like two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, it was. What was it in? It was um, wrapped in plastic, like sandwich bags. Mm. Each thousand, we had it wrapped up, rubber band over each so thousand. It took time. Yeah, it was. It, it had been. It had been like that in the safe. Right, gotcha. But um, that's that's how it was. Really, the safe was already. It was rubber band up, you know. But then once it got into that hole, I'm thinking. And this is to anybody who don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking I buy a waterproof and fireproof safe. That shit is not waterproof. Yeah, so you come home. Yeah. Do you dig the six, seven feet yourself yeah. again? Yeah, 100%. So you dig your safe out. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah, and, and I'm digging for hours and hours, pulling my hair out, because I'm not hitting the safe. Right. And so I'm thinking somebody <laughs> went in there and got it. And um, finally, you know, I'm praying, like, man, finally I hit. You know, I hit this, and I'm like, oh. And then it took me probably like another four hours to get it wedged out. Because it's in there, I got to go head first and I'm trying to flip it around to get to the... And then finally when I get the, um, um, the, the part with the combination and the key, I forget the combo. So now I'm trying to play with it for another hour. <laughs> and finally I open it and when I open it, it's filled up with water. Yeah, man. And so then I'm just like, I ain't never had no breakdown. I'm just sitting there, uh, 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 I yeah. lose it. I just take everything out, put it in a duffel bag, get out, run in, the, run in the house. I'm going crazy. My mom is like, what's going on? I'm like, uh, let's go in the bathroom. She's like, what the fuck is going on? With you? What's the matter with you? And uh, then I'm just trying to figure out like how I salvage it. The money was molded, wet. Each stack was like falling apart. When you pull it apart, it was just crumbling. So moms went and got, um, blow dryers mm -hmm. for me and then so I just went in the bathroom and was peeling them off little by little, putting them to the side and blow drying them till they get back hard so they wouldn't break. And then bro came in, helped me, moms helped me, pops came, helped. Yeah. And so we was just in there separating them and trying to salvage as much of it as we could. You put 250 in. Yeah. I'm Discover Boating and Progressive present the top safe boating tips. Crazy. Staying seated and secure is paramount when your vessel is How much you lose? Uh, probably like a good, maybe like a good 50 was just like gone. Like you couldn't do nothing with it, broke all up. Uh, the rest of the money we salvaged and um, it was just smelt like shit, fucked up on the edges. But you know, this was this was like, we, we counted it up and was like, all right, this is what we got. And then it was the campaign. Like, man, we going, we went next check cashing. 
how many stores they got in this area. Yeah. We got the map, there's 50 of them. Everybody, 2,000, go. And we just get money orders. Money, yeah. money orders, money orders, money orders, 2,000, 2,000. It came to a point where we couldn't even walk into the, uh, like uh, Knicks. Uh, to the Knicks. As soon as we get in the line, they're like, oh, hell no, nah. get the fuck out the store. That, that money, that, that, that bullshit ass money stinks. So we was like, we was banned from the Knicks. Everybody from the Knicks all over the city, if anybody working in the Knicks, they remember us. Damn. And we was coming through with the 2,000, trying to get $2,000 money orders. And so you know you lost 50 off the top. Mm -hmm. And then the other was stinky money. Yep. But you were able to get that back. So you lost 250 complete. I mean, 50 complete. Yeah, 50, 50 was and like. that's 50 real ones. Yep, 50 real ones, man. And it was all the 100 stacks. Damn. The 100 stacks be, be, be just 10, 10 bills. The, it, was the, it was the fives, the 20s, and the 10s that survived because the top, it was 1,000, but the top two bills would, would, would go to waste. The bottom two bills would go to waste. So when it's a five, a 10, or a 20, you, you may lose like 40 bucks. On them thousand, on them hundred stacks, you lose the faux, the faux top and the faux bottom. That's the whole Damn. thousand gone. So it was the, it was the, it was the low denominations that we were able to save, which was good, and it was good that you know a lot of the bills was low bills. So where do you go from there though? When, um, once you dig it up and you do all the nicks and try to get it back, what's the next so-called hustle that comes? Because is, is the other game gone now? The, uh, the other game is not gone at this point, but it's different, mm -hmm. and I'm hot. And um, you know, my goal, my goal was for number one, I'm number one, I'm not spending shit. Right. So at this at this point, I, I'm not spending <laughs> nothing. I'm in the bucket, you know, I'm not spending nothing, but um we had one good Christmas, made sure that the fam right. got cars and everybody was good, and after that it's I'm not spending nothing. And at this point, it was like we gotta spend it. So now I was like, what we what we gonna spend it with? And you hustle, hustle was getting money. Hustle was like, look, this what this this what we need to do. So he like, man, I'm putting everything I got in it. Let's put let's throw some let's throw some money at it too. So that's when we kind of we went and that's when we on the jewelry and we spending money on certain things and, and, and really building the um, the label up. You know, all equipment. You know, we bought a spot, got another spot in Atlanta. We just going trying to like you know. Get, get build the infrastructure and get the team right. So Nip already the got them. He already got the music bug, bug, and already got thinking music business. Hundred percent. So take take what we have and put it into music. Put yep. it into you know the dream. Yep. Hundred percent. Did you trust that early on? Because you had already seen it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I trusted it because like I told, I used to tell everybody this, but him also. When I first heard him write something, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, you wrote this? He like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, this is special. And so, you know me, I'm like, shit, my brother wrote that? So I tried to start trying to write some shit. <laughs> Man, I'm writing for two weeks and I just threw the shit away. I ain't got it. So I hey, always- Hey, at certain points, did it feel like baby bro was lead, leading big bro? No, 100%. Yeah. 100%, man, 100%. And you know, even since we was young, we always knew he was like special. And, uh, you know, it was always for the older brother, you know, you know, it's uh, it's an honor that mm -hmm. my little brother is doing, you know, things that I can be proud of. Right. And um, just, you know, never failed, man, since we was little. Just so you always. saw how special your bro, how, how special Nip was before the world knew how special he was. 100%. I think anybody at this time, a lot of people ask me this question, like, man, when did he? And I'd be telling them it wasn't no when, it was always. Anybody that was around him from young, he was, he was certified gifted as a little kid. Anybody that was around him, his charisma, he, he always stood out. People were always were like, no, this guy is special. Mm -hmm. From a little kid to junior high to high school to, you know, in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. the homies. Yeah. Everybody like, no, this dude is special. Everybody, you know, Nip, Nip led, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The people followed and, and, and respected and looked up to. Older, young, it didn't matter. They, they, they knew. Who tapped into the neighborhood first? Hustle. Oh, really? For sure. Hustle. I, you know, I'm, I'm young and I'm going to school in Watts before him. So as far as like knowing about hoods and, and gang L.A. culture, I was I, I was exposed to that first going to Watts and going to school at Markham uh, outside of our neighborhood and what we saw. But once, you know, obviously Nip get older, Nip 
in our neighborhood, which I never wanted him to be a part of. Right. You know, honestly, you know, anybody, and I say this, anybody that, 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 that grow up and understand, you don't want your little bro being a part of, you know, some shit that you know is destructive. My goal was always, we gotta get this bread and we gotta get the money and we gotta, you know, we, 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 we need to make sure that we own. So, um, you know, seeing hustle and, and, and me not being able to do anything about it either. Right. You know, it's like, man, you know, only thing I could do at a point, it came to, it came to a point where hustle was so, so deep in and so involved and so much going on around him in the neighborhood mm-hmm. with the politics in the neighborhood. It's like, all right, now, you know, I got to be there with bro and I got to be and people need to understand like, yeah, this is his bro and his bro is here. Here and you know, um, if 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 nobody else is tripping, I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. And, and and Nip had a certain unit, and and and, and, and that was our unit. Um, but yeah, definitely um, hustle, hustle. Were you were you always concerned when you start seeing him going down a certain path? Because you already know, man. Like, dude, he's studious. He's reading books. He's building computers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then there's always a time where we got some of this and some of that. You know, and he had this and he had that. Were you concerned when you saw Nip kind of getting in a lot more? Yeah, hundred percent. What would you tell him? Would you tell him like, man, we got you got this music, or you got, or you just, he just wasn't listening? Um, I think at that point we was all trying to get money. You know, hustle was getting to the money, but at the same time he was associating and hanging out, and you know, it's I'm like full time get the money. Hustle right. was half and half. And, you know, the other half could get, you know, get you, get you, you know, gone for a long time. So mm-hmm. that, that, that was a dynamic at that time. Um, once, one, once it, you know, transitioned into full time hustle, trying to do the music, um, that's where, that, that's where I felt like, okay, this is the opportunity. Right. And this is, and honestly, this is what now, okay, whatever I can add to this, Whatever I can help with, in any way I wanna, I wanna be there and support because this is, this is the direction that I know. Number one, bro, is super talented. Mm-hmm. Like I tell him, like man, if you if you wasn't talented, bro, we oughta told you like, come on, man, let's let's do something else. This ain't gonna right. work. But you know, I, I full heartedly believe and I know that this is, you know, this is this is some this is his calling, and this is something that's, you know, channel, channeling um, his energy in the correct in the correct way. Did, could you believe how talented he was early on? Like when you say he he wrote a rap, you're like, dude, you wrote that? Yep. Like yeah. did he always amaze you? Yep, always, always amaze me. And, and, and you know, every everything, that's what I tell everybody, man, everything I ever heard from him, nothing, everything was special. And I was surprised. So, you know, me, Fats, mm-hmm. um, you know, my cousin Adam, everybody, mm-hmm. the, our, our inner core team was like fully behind Hustle, you know, you know, Did you feel like he had to put a circle around him too? Yeah, hundred percent. He 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 had a tight crew, and then mm-hmm. so I wanted to make sure that I came with, with 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 and helped build the circle, and just make sure that you know, yeah, we from this area, but it's crews within the area, and right. you know what I'm saying niggas need to understand that our crew and hustle crew is one of them crews, and you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So that that was the goal, and I, and and you know that was the people that you see today. That's all money in. You know, that was the crew. That was the crew before right. anything that people understood and knew, like, all right, this is this is hustle crew. And you know, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be consequences behind and, it. And this is like we make it or we don't. We this is a, this isn't somebody, this isn't a group of people that somebody got on and you just started adding to it. hundred percent. This is the this is the crew when them hood politics start coming mm-hmm. and when and, and when motherfuckers start being like, you on your own, th- this crew is not not with that. Right. This crew is like there. Did you feel like you had to go a little harder in because you had to make make sure that nobody did fuck with y'all? Like it had to turn you into a little bit more of like, man, you, you can't fuck with this. Um, I think it's I, I think hustle led by example and hustle yeah. was, was 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 known for that. Mm. And both the fats and, and Kabi and everybody that, you know, um, Stone, eh, eh, mm. hustle, hustle, main crew, Hoggy, the, you know that was that, that's what the crew was was known for off the top. 
So I think to answer your question, yes. If you know, that's just anybody in any crew. Right. Yeah, so either you're gonna be respected or you're not gonna be respected. Yeah. So, you know, we we was um we was on Crenshaw and Slauson. Yeah, man. You know, we had the shops. Um, we lost them. You know, we had spots all up and down Slauson. Um uh, uh, uh weed spots. Mm -hmm. You know, we had we, we we had a lot going on and um Yes, it, 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 it had to be known and it was known. Like we ain't them, we, we not the guys that, you know, the older older dudes is coming through trying to extort. It's not happening. Right. You know, we not the guys that's um, uh, going for anything, you know. It's too many times that I can even, uh, I can't even speak about. Somebody came, said one disrespectful thing, hustle, take the chain off, take his chains off, and squabbling. Yeah, man. And so, so people knew, don't, you know, don't, don't say nothing to hustle. And that's when, that's if hustle was around all his crew or it was solo. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so. Intense on everything. Intense on the music, intense on the hustle, intense on the street, intense, yeah, yeah. so. 100%. That, that was hustle. Yeah, man. That was hustle, man. That's why he was respected. That's why the young kids in the neighborhood love bro. You know, they seen him pull up solo, you know, in the bulletproof, hop out all the jewelry, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on, on Victoria, on Brian Hurst. And, you know, certain people say the wrong thing, hustle, hustle in the middle of the streets, squabbing. You know, ma mandatory respect. Um, and at the same time, leading by example and, um, and providing uh, uh, inspiration. You know, people seeing With Chevy Equinox EV, you and your money can go further in America's most affordable EV with over 350. Hustle do it. They know yeah, Hustle man. was there with them. They know Hustle sold dope with them. And they see Hustle. And then when he talked, they listen. And he giving you game. He like, look, this is what you need to do. You know, so, so, so many people um, from the neighborhood was inspired first, you know, hands on. And also from other neighborhoods, you know, mm -hmm. from, from so-called neighborhoods that was enemies. You know, they, 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 to this day, man, people be, you know, seeing me or even they would see bro and just be like, man, you know, I'm from Muti Wu, but man, yeah. like, like we got our shop and we, we started our record label. And, you know, so I think in L.A. and, and, and gang culture, hustle just inspired everybody and, um, and, and, and led by example. And that's, that's why, you know, the whole city salute, saluted mm -hmm. what he was doing. Sam, talk to me about like a... Uh the days of when y'all did start the the t-shirts and, yeah. and things and you know opening up opening up stores always being entrepreneurs as well mm -hmm. you know it's probably thinking about things we weren't even thinking about you know what i'm saying like opening up stores like when did that start for you guys when y'all started thinking like man we wear t-shirts <laughs> you right, know what i'm saying right, like right. we need to sell them i think um we was trying to get money and um you know it was a lot going on, multiple arrests mm. uh, uh, for myself. And um, I think me and Fats, man, we was, a, we was, we was selling t-shirts and then we had the weed on the low. But the main, the main reason for us being in the parking lot <laughs> was like, we're selling shirts, we're right. selling t-shirts, boxers. So it kind of started off kind of as a front, honestly. Right. And then we would have the movies, we would have the weed, but when the police pull up, we like, man, it was t-shirts. And we start seeing the demand. Were y'all on the streets or y'all at brick and mortar at that? No, we was on the streets at this gotcha. time. Gotcha. And we was in front of Louisiana Fried Chicken. You know it well. Check cashing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All, all, <laughs> all the homies used to stay there and sell dope at the check cashing. <laughs> when everybody get their cash, Boom. they check cash. First person you see. And so now we there too. And so, you know, we would get people cashing checks. They would come spend with us. Uh, um, t shirts. The homies would buy shirts. And we start noticing that we short stopping the swap meet. Mm. Sloss and swap meet. Yeah. We short stopping them now. Everybody coming buying their t shirts from us. And um, it started turning into something. And we start selling out every day. Y'all just had tables out there? Yep. Had yeah. a table, trunk, and then we'll go from the trunk back and forth and um, turn that spot into a, a money spot also. And then police start coming and start right. seizing our is stuff. Is this after your DVDs? Yeah, this is, okay. This, this after that. So, gotcha. you know, I couldn't go to that spot no more because it was done. <laughs> and so now I'm like, we need to find another spot. We got blessed and found this spot and it turned into something again. And obviously same program. We there every day. Mm -hmm. I'm going, you know, hustle, making his rounds, pulling up on us, chilling with us for a minute, going back, doing what he needs to do. He had spots, other spots everywhere. He was doing his music. And uh, Fats, I used to pull up, mm. knock on Fats' door, hey, bro, come on, get him at six in the morning and we'll just be there, bleeding it, till like 12, midnight, seven days a week. And, um, you know, we would have never stopped. 
Um, police came, came, kept coming, kept coming. Finally, they came and uh, they start seizing our uh, clothes, Ooh. taking everything. And I'm talking about back to back, we'll go spend fifteen hundred dollars on just gang of shirts. They'll come take it the next day, take the next day. So we just getting defeated. Like damn, we you know we gonna, we can't keep, we can't keep spending right. this shit. And they taking it. Talking about they giving us a ticket. And um, I think it was in a documentary, man. But I remember the one police officer. You know, we like, bro, it's a black officer. He be like, man, why, why you keep taking our shit, man? We selling shirts. He like, man, shut the fuck up. I niggas wanna uh, 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 sell t-shirts. You know, get, go um, go rent a building and pay lease like the rest of the uh, taxpaying citizens. So I'm like, man, fuck you, man. So he ended up leaving, and so we sit on the curb. I'm mad, feeling defeated, and I just look up, and I'm, I'm looking across the street at the um, at the plaza, 3420, and I see a big ass for lease sign. And so I was like, oh, that's God. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's God. I called the number and um, we ended up getting that lease. And that's that was the first brick and mortar store we had called Sloss and Tees. And literally sitting there and looked over and yep. there it was. Yep. Yep. And I was, I was like, oh, that's a sign. So we got it. And um, same thing. We up early. We got the tables. We, 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 you know, we started off with one table in there with like a, a box of socks because we spent everything trying to get the place. Mm-hmm. And, um, then things start rolling again, start rolling again. And uh, now we making money back, hands over fists. You know, it, it, the journey, it was always ups and downs. Mm-hmm. We up for a minute and then we down. We up for a minute, we down. But the key was just keep, just stay at it. And um, Sloss and Tees turned into something just mm-hmm. like crazy. We across the street, we had, we had the homies across the street with the tables, had the check cashing. We had them pointing, the, uh, sending everybody traffic to us. And it was just ping pong. We running across the street, and you know we had the movies, we had the weed, we had everything booming. People coming from every different neighborhood. All they girls coming to 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 Crenshaw and Slauson pulling in the lot. Slauson T's turned into something that was just like big, and it was bigger. And um, then Nip is doing music, and you know, anytime Nip would pull up, it's like Michael Jackson pulled up in the hood. Gotcha. Nip put Nip pull up, everybody pulling up. And uh, this is before any deal, any anything. We'll be like, bro, you gotta stop pulling up and hanging out in the front, man. It's, you know, you got a hundred crips in the front, mm-hmm. customers driving by, scared to pull up. This is this is at that time. So when you see that you guys are brick and mortar, <laughs> things start going, that had to get give you that bug of like, man, this is something that we can continue to do. Yeah. What did you learn early on when you go brick and mortar? Um, you know, we we was uh, we was no rules at that point. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, we was hungry, we was thirsty, we was doing everything. We had fake Louis bags, we had <laughs> fake Lacoste shirts, we had the fake Nikes, remember when the Jordans, everybody had, we had everything in there and, and you know, you know, we, we was thinking it was never going to end. We was like, oh, this is crazy. We, 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 the store ended up making damn near like four, five thousand a day. Just because we was, we had right. the Jordans, we had the this, we had, the, it was just, you know, and then we get hit. Please welcome President Ronald Reagan who has a few questions for you. You know, we get hit, we get hit hard too, at this right. point. Uh, detectives, oh, shit. Uh, Motion Picture Association come back on me right oh. there, uh, uh, 77 Precinct. So they hit the shop, you know, it was it was multiple, you know. You just saw different jackets, yeah. just reading it like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I got stuck, that's, that's, that's what stuck me. That, 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 when they raided that, that got me stuck. I ended up, um, I was already out on joint suspension, had like five or six felony arrests that I was fighting. And then this one, they came in, probation department came with them. They raided like it was 40 different police officers and um, they got me. And, they, and so I ended up going and I didn't get out. I was in for like 22 months. Mm. And when I get out, the shop is gone. We yeah. lost the shop. So but it's almost two years later. Two years later. but. Hustle was doing, got signed, and Hustle was in New York, and Hustle, Hustle is in the magazines, and so my whole time in, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like, all right, I'm not, I'm not even tripping. It's meant to be. I, I was out for as much as I was needed to try to help as much as I could, and then now, bro, got it from here, mm-hmm. and transition has happened. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I'm and just, you were getting word that that Nip was moving. Yeah, he's sending me, you know, I'm on the phone with them every day. I'm hearing about it. He's sending me magazine articles. Um, you know, I'm listening to the radio. You know, I, I see the I see the music video, the first music video, Hustle in the House. Mm-hmm, so mm. definitely, man, I'm in there just like 
you know, pumped and, and yeah. happy. Like this little time ain't shit. I'm Do you know you're coming home to it, or did you, did you think it moved past you? No, I, I know. I know I'm coming home to it. Yeah, I'm coming home to it. You know, and uh, uh, I, I only I, I wasn't doing a lot of time, so you know, I think uh, hustle was his, his key was like you're gonna come home to something legit. So you know. That was that, that that was a blessing, mm -hmm. and, and that's what that's what I came home to. I came home to something legit, that was um, that was like out of control. This is the this is the time when her, uh, uh, her bullets ain't got no names. Volume mm -hmm. two was out, so Nip was the hottest thing in the streets. Nip New York buzz was going crazy, um, and you know head, head on. My my goal was, you know obviously I can't be, you know there with a handout. Or, or trying to like you right. know, take. So but my goal was like, how do I, you know, do what I, I'm known to do, and yeah. that's try to add value to whatever is going on. So that was that that, that was the mind state, and um, my goal was I need to get the shop back, and you know we went through a, a, a couple of hurdles trying to get the shop back. Um, the same shop. The shop. Obviously. The same shop. You know, couple cu cu couple uh, different little hurdles, but we ended up getting the shop next to it. Mm. bigger and um, we turned that into Sloss and Ave clothing and from there you know Nip uh, um, the Hustle in the House video the Crenshaw the Crenshaw uh, crew neck everybody was hitting the, the MySpace and hitting the, 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 the articles um, uh, I mean the, the social medias and Adam and, and Nip was I think Adam actually was like man everybody keep asking for this Crenshaw uh, crew neck so I'm like huh I'm no. like, hold on, what, what you talking about? He like, yeah, the, the sweater Nip had on in the Hustle in the House video, everybody on here, that's what they, man, where can I buy one, where can I buy one? So I'm like, all right, that's it right there. That's all I need to hear, that's God. Once again, mm -hmm. like, okay, so me and Fats, we like, we about to make these. So we went and we, oh, we, we reproduced God. the custom uh, Crenshaw crew neck and the hoodies. And we back across the street at the table, um, <laughs> you know? And, and from there, we were able to get the, uh, the unit and turn that into Slauson Ave. You know what I mean? And, and then it's the same thing, ping pong. And that shit turned into something bigger than bigger than the first one. And uh but but the only difference is now instead of selling fake shit, right, right. We selling our own shit. And and you know, we creating the brand and hustle, you know, is putting it on his back. Every video, people come through, he's he's branding it, he's um getting people to come and support and you know. He made he, he he made that uh that that sweater even more iconic. Mm -hmm. And when you see a Crenshaw crew neck or a hoodie or a shirt, you think of hustle. Yeah, man. And so, you know, from there, hustle goal was like we gotta create a, a, a clothing brand. And, you know, it, it, what was births was the marathon clothing. Um, you know, after his mixtape, the marathon continues, the TMC. I was like, TMC, marathon continues, man. Hold on, marathon clothing. So we all go high-fiving because we <clears throat> So Nip was a cold hustler from the very beginning, apparently, and so was his brother. You see what he said? He's always looking to add value. He didn't want to get out taken from Nip's success. He's thinking, how can I add value? But... I mean, they got printers, they burning CDs, DVDs. Now they selling T-shirts. Got the building for the T-shirt. I mean, they've been hustling from the beginning. Nip had a vision from the beginning, was clearly intelligent, had built a computer at 12 years old. Brilliant, even. I don't know what to call it. And um, that was it. And one, 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 of the, one of the things was, you know, while... The sweater and the the, the, the the crew necks is getting famous. Everybody start bootlegging our shit. Oh, and so we like, man, how do we how do we stamp like oh, that? It's now official. You wanna, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. How, how you do were we, the guy at first, huh? Now you all tripping. Right, right. You know, you know. <laughs> and, and I said we gotta respect the game. You know, they bootlegging right. our shit, but not too much. Right. How, how, how do we how do we stamp it? Hustle like, nah, we gonna we gonna the tag game marathon. It's, it's a Crenshaw crew neck is a knockoff, and that was genius. And so now people like, yeah, that's. If, if it ain't the if it ain't got the marathon yeah, on man, it, it ain't the real. Day. Yep. And you know, and it was off to the races, man. And you know, just the direction from hustle, you know, always. I remember he had some um, he had some people come through with cameras in the shop. And um, you know, me, I'm in the shop. I'm like, man, who was all these people? All these white white dudes with cameras, man. What's he like? Nah, they cool, they cool, bro. So I'm looking. They taking pictures. They end up being um, uh, the hundreds. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe I talked to Bobby Hundred. He like, I want to do. I'm doing a blog. I want to come um, to to the area. I want to drive around with you. I want to come to your shop. And so, you know, initially I'm, I'm I'm like, man, we don't need all these dudes in here taking pictures, man. The next day, we had surfers. We had yeah. white dudes coming through. We seen so much traffic. Everybody was coming to the shop trying to get a Crenshaw hoodie or Crenshaw crew neck. And so I was just like, man, hustle. I'm telling him. He's like, I told he you, bro. It, huh? He knew it. And um, it just turned into. You know, so it just kept going to something big and Hustle was like, yeah, we gonna, we need, we, we, we need a branded store. We need a store called the Marathon Store. There are moments you see everyone you love. And it needs to be like, you know, our version of the San Rio. We need to, cre- we need to create products. The Marathon Store needs to create, you know, Marathon clothing products. Uh, the Marathon branded products, you know, he was talking, I'm, I'm on a branded money machine. I'm, he was just, you know, giving us the ideas and we taking notes like, all right. And so, you know, I want to have a Marathon water. I want to have just, he's just telling us like, you know, and, and we start seeing the vision like, okay, all right, this is, this is something big. And, you know, little by little, you know, we was just stacking the money, hustle, stacking the bread and, and, and contributing like, bro, put this towards this, put this towards this. And, you know, the people, the people supported, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, the brand was built by the people, man. Um, just the, the, the area, anybody would come from out of town, they would always want oh, to come yeah. and support. And that's so how we were able to open that, uh, the Marathon store, the official. Do you know what's crazy about even just Marathon and Crenshaw? Like, Crenshaw was already famous. People knew Crenshaw, you know, movies and all the wall. But y'all made Crenshaw worldwide. And it's crazy, man, because I know that you've seen people that look like they wouldn't even know mm-hmm. about Crenshaw. Sam, we're taking a brand now, and that you see, that you see is worldwide. You got a, an amazing crew. You know, you can't even say staff. You know what I'm saying? You got an amazing, you have an amazing crew at that time, bro. Did you ever feel like, like, man, this is this is really happening? Not were you surprised by how big things were becoming, but did you always envision that either your little bro was going to be this guy or did you always envision that there was something bigger for you guys together or you couldn't see what this either was becoming or what it is now? I think um, definitely never, me personally, I never envisioned that, um, you know, it was going to become, you know, where, where Hustle took it, I had no clue. But I always felt like uh, we was going to be good because we was hustling. Mm-hmm. And we was, we was going to, regardless, we were going to have. That was the, for right. me, that was the thing. Like, we want to make sure we have, we want to make sure the family got it. Got it. Like, Granny getting a new Jaguar. M- Mom's got to get a Benz. Yeah. Pop's got to get a, a BMW, you know, and, and get some jewelry. And, and y'all were able us, to do those things. Yeah, that was the that was the for us young growing up. That was like you made it. Yeah. So um, now when you in that, you, reality hits. Like okay, hold on. How do how this 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 can't last? How do we how do I legitimize or how do I? What is the next level? Because it's nothing. You know, it's nothing. It's, it's the foundation of what we doing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't last when, you, right, when, you, when right. you're doing anything illegal or you're on the street. So with that, I think Hustle had the vision. And Hustle was like, no, nah, this is what we're going to do. And every time, Hustle would lead the way. And I remember Hustle telling, like, this clothing, this clothing going to be big. It's going to be one of the biggest things we do watch. And, um, you know, just Hustle just ha- having, the, having the script. Like, man, we're going to stay independent with the music. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going we, we gonna to have a label. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to always have my masters and just, you know, hustle. You know. How do you know that so, so early on, man? Especially in a, a time where everybody's like, man, I got to be on Def Jam. I got to mm-hmm. be on this. I got to be on that. Whatever the label is. Right. How did he, you guys had a wherewithal like, no, we got to we got to own the masters. We hear a lot of that now. Right. And at some point, man, you just want to get in so bad mm-hmm. that you'll take anything. Yeah. You know, what made him or you guys decide, like, no, we, we got to do it our way? I think that was Hustle, man. Mm-hmm. You know, that was Hustle. He, um, he educated himself always, and I think he read a lot of books. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
You know, I remember him telling me like, look, this is what, and, and also him trying to involve us and others. I think his, his um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, man? His, the, the, the way he was, he wanted to build something that other people could be involved in. So if he was thinking solely for himself, maybe he would have been like, oh, I need a deal. Right. But he was like, look, this is this is how y'all could add value. This is how y'all could have ownership. This is how we could get in business. Yeah, I do music and I'm an artist, but we gonna start a label. And this is how Master P did it. This is how right. Cash Money did it. This is how Jay and them did it. So it was examples. And um, and he just really wasn't saying like this is how they did it. He had the details, he had books. He had, look, this, this is the split. This is the type of deal. This is who they did it with. And so, you know, he's lacing us and making us believe and giving us value. Like, okay, shit, yeah, we don't, we don't do music, but we can be in the music business and we can create a company. He formed the company. He's like, look, I incorporated this, and he had business cards, and you know, he had the vision for the for the um, the um, the markets that he wanted to, you know, go at. And he like, we gonna put posters up and we gonna sew up our area first, and then after that we gonna go to here and go to here, and you know, I think anybody that talked to him. And, and saw how sharp he was and educated he was, was like, all right, a, a, along with the talent. But they was like, all right, now he's not just an right. artist. He's, he's, he's a businessman and he knows what he wants. Um, and I think that's why he, everything he said he was gonna do, he was able to accomplish it. Yeah, man. It was times, bro, where he'd tell me about, but Big, have you read this book? Have you, you know, other people asking, have you went to this restaurant? Have right, you tried right, this, right, right. you know? And it was always a book. We did the, I remember we did that that cruise yep. and everybody else was throwing pool parties and this, that, and the other. And he did like just a seminar where he just talked about business. Dope. You know what I'm saying? And and opening up. And it was times, bro, away from the radio stations mm -hmm. and away from, you know, the limelight, just the conversations mm -hmm. that I would have. And mm -hmm. you gotta think, bro, like I'm Damn near 20 years senior, but I'm listening to bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening because you know when a wise man speaks. Yep. You know, and you guys trusted that, and you also understood, like, man, we can add value to this as well. Mm -hmm. And just a just a just a good team of people working for a real common cause, bro. Yeah. And you look at when you say the masterpiece, the cash monies, you know, mm -hmm. the Rockefellers, you know, those are things that you had a chance to look at. And then you guys become that where you give other people. I know you had to see other people with hope that, man, we doing the same thing. Yep, 100 percent. And one thing we used to always, you know, with hustle. He was always willing. And I think he, you know, his driving force was to inspire people, mm -hmm. you know, and so. You know, honestly speaking, uh, I'm very ter territorial, like, hold on, hold on, like, it's a good idea, like, hold on, don't get that idea, like, that's right. us, we got to do this, and hustle with, you know, always, like, we ain't even, you just told us about this, we still working on it, and you telling the next person, you telling the next person, you telling the hustle, be like, nah, bro, it's cool, we gonna, you know, get, 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 get a game, and, you know, we, we gonna, we gonna be good, but he, he always wanted to, you share know, the wealth, share. share the wealth, share the knowledge. Yep, and that's and that's one that's one thing that we used to laugh and joke like, oh, bro, don't. But when you look back and take a step back, man, it's, it was a quality that you know definitely other people appreciated, and, and mm -hmm. I myself had to be like, man, hustle was just, you know, he he his goal and his purpose, like he really wanted to always inspire, and then he also got a kick out of seeing somebody achieve. Like he 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 loved it, and you know, I think that made him feel good. Hey man, I remember even the smart store when y'all opened up the Marathon Smart Store. Yep. I was like, what the fuck is a smart store? Yep. And early on, we used to be like, yeah, you can come in and you can point your phone at this. And I'm like, what? And then is it Idris? Yep. Idris? Idris Sandu. Yep. I remember, man, when he told us the story about how he met him, he said he was like, went to go get a green juice. And yep. Idris was in there and he said, man, I just kept walking past, bro. That he was doing something with his hands mm -hmm. and making things move. But even just to tap in to something like that so early, bro. Yep. When, and, and, and peep it 
and understand, man, this is the next thing. Mm -hmm. And now you see certain things now, man, like Nip was on before we had even had the scans where everything could just be scanned. Now everything is scanned like yep. that. And when you talk about a smart store, bro, nobody was thinking about that. Man, I'm gonna tell you a story, man. Uh, that, that, that goes to Hustle Genius. You know, we scrambling, trying to get the store open. And we did like a little mini doc and we got, made sure the store was filled up with clothes and we trying to, you know, fold them correctly and make sure it's clean. And we finally ready, probably like a week and a half before the grand opening, or maybe like two weeks. And we doing our countdown. And hustle like, yeah, we, uh, man, I just met this guy at the Starbucks. I was going to get a tea or something and I seen him and I'm like, huh? He like, yeah, we about to um, make the store a smart store. So I'm like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't hey, got time for that. that. I don't even know what, like you say, I don't know what is a smart store. He's like, no, trust me, trust me, bro. So I'm pulling my hair out. I'm mad, like, man, what is this? And so I meet Idris and he's telling me this and I'm like, bro, we don't got time. So we end up, he, he get it and he make everything. He go in and he integrate it with the clothing and you know, geofence it. And then so I'm learning things that I had no clue about. And in hindsight, looking now, when that store opened and it was the first smart store. And that's why I just like yeah, hustle, the genius of hustle, man. And so many different things like that he's done. Um, but it's always, you know, driven from his vision and he got the right vision. And, you know, to this day, people still talk about that smart store. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bro. And, um, and just him, find, him seeing Idris and seeing him young, black, dope mm -hmm. at technology and wanting to do something with him and wanting to, you know, um, have him a part of the store grand opening. And then him also, um, you know, just being excited to see Idris keep taking it to the next level. You know, that, 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 that was something that, um, like I say, man, that, that, that really drove Hustle. What made you guys want to like really do business and be a part of the community as well? I think um, you know instinctively that's the that 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 corner Crenshaw and Slauson. Mm -hmm. You know we used to walk from my mom's house to the bus stop on Crenshaw and Slauson in front of the shell when mm -hmm. we was little and catch the bus to Watts school bus. Um, there was a shells the gas station there, and I remember when we found out that the owner was a black man. Fucked us up. We was little. We never thought like a black person could own a gas station. And so he was there and he would fuck with us. Like, what's up, man? What's up? He was cool. He, he, he coached basketball and um, he liked us because we used to go in there, backpack empty, no books, buy all the 25 cent ba uh, bags of hot Cheetos, fill the backpack up, go to school, sell them for 50 cents. And we used to come every day. Be like, man, y'all getting all the chips and no books. So he, he, he kind of took a liking to us, but that's when we thought, you know, ownership from right. back then. And fast forward, that parking lot behind the shell is where yeah. the shop is. Yeah, Hustle, we used to be in there um, hustling when it was an abandoned building. And then he sold his first mixtape in there. And then we were across the street hustling. And for us to be able to get the shop in that parking lot, it meant everything because we grew up yeah, in man. that parking lot, in that area. Um, and by us getting the shop, the community supported mm -hmm. young, old people that may have looked at us and been like frowning upon us at this time. Like, man, I'm proud of y'all, man. Y'all got a business and they made sure that they came and supported. So um, the significance of that area and being there and all the money that was spent with us, they saw what it was turning into. So mm -hmm. everybody from the aunties, the grandmas, you know, to the homies come and spending money, they seen, we took it and we flipped it, and we took it and we flipped it, and they saw what the support, um, you know, what, what we did with the support. And it was key for Hustle that um, he stayed, and we opened the first marathon store there. Right there. Because there was a lot going on, man. Police, you know, I'm going to jail, everybody going to jail, they raiding the shop. So at one point it was, you know, like, man, we need to get a shop on Fairfax. We mm -hmm. need to open this marathon store. Like when we do the marathon store, it need to be somewhere where we ain't gotta worry about this. You know, we get into it with the homies sometimes and you know, right. all type of stuff. We like, we, we may need to do that, but Hustle was adamant like, nah, that's store number two. Store number one, we gotta open up on Crenshaw and Slauson. Um, and I think, um, number one, it was because he wanted to inspire and wanted to show people like, nah, like, like I'm from this area and I'm doing something big here yeah, and man. I'm investing here. And number two, you know, it was an obligation because, 
you know, we was we, we, we was made and the brand was built from the people's support. So it was so very necessary. Yeah. Did the owner of the show ever know that those were the same kids on the other side of the alley? Man, I don't know. I That's don't know because he ended up selling it. Um, I don't know. But uh, I hope so. If, if he if he if he seen hustle, he probably could put two and two And Some of the employees, you know, he hired all the all the um, the, the, the young you know, 20-year-olds uh, from the area. Mm -hmm. So the homegirls was in there working. And, uh, some of the homies, when we was younger, we knew that they had jobs. And um, so I I'm sure if they had contact with them, they let them know. Were you ever concerned about how accessible you guys were? Um, I mean, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Just every day, be, 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 we know where we at. Right, right. So um, we was always, you know, had to be aware and be on point um, dealing with all the different things that that go on with you know b being in being in the hood, um, but I think I always felt that you know God was protecting and uh, and, and basically we felt like nothing could happen like because we've been through too much, to so many different crazy circumstances where you know you know. We felt like as long as we do the right thing and we keep pushing forward with the positive, uh, 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 niggas can't like it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing that could happen. So that that's the uh, that was the honest um, thought, you know. And um, you know, just hindsight, man, just you never understand. Man, I think as as. Uh Five at Breck. Five peaks all above 10,000 feet. Five peaks. As a partner, as someone <clears throat> from the outside looking in, right? I remember just what what that day felt like when it passed. My mom passed on March 31st as well, right? So literally, I went to my mom's grave and I was doing a comedy show probably like the night or two before. And I wanted Nip to record me a drop, like, oh, go see Big Boy's comedy show. He didn't get around to it. So literally on the way home, I was like, man, when I get home, I'm gonna call him like, oh, it's successful and you know, and, and do what we usually do, bro. And when I got to the house, I remember my, my man Fuzzy, he had hit me up and he said, man, I'm over here by Marathon. He said, something's going on over here. He said, they got it blocked off. And I was like, man, I said, uh, he said, I'm gonna try to get closer. And when he called me back, he said, man, they're saying something happened with Nip. What was that day like for you, bro? Would, and did you feel any prem premonitions before we lost Nip? No, 100%, man. I think, man, we just, uh, it's my cousin's birthday. So the night, I want to say the night before, Nip took us to uh, Wally's. Beverly Hills, me, Pops, um, and Adam, my cousin Adam, and uh, just had a long talk with bro, you know, not to get into too much detail, but it was a lot of bit politics, getting into it with certain people, you know, Hustle had DJ Khaled in the hood. Not to be speaking too much on shit, but we came front line like we always do, and you know, niggas gonna know we gonna crash out behind it, Back. We're not playing, and nobody's saying nothing to Khaled, and nobody doing nothing to Khaled, and he's straight and hustle, frontline that, and um, you know we felt like certain people didn't didn't like that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where everyone assumes or believes or insinuates or blatantly says that he's uh, referring to Big U. I don't know who he's referring to, but he says there confirming that. Nipsey Hussle had a problem with someone who had a problem with him bringing DJ Khaled to the hood, uh, you know, presumably without DJ Khaled paying, paying taxes for coming over there. And he said that the night before, so the night before Nipsey passed away or was brutally unalive, they were at Wally's for his cousin's birthday, some restaurant. 
and him and Nipsey were talking about the politics that was going on and the adamance that Nipsey had with whoever this other person is that did not like him bringing DJ Khaled over there. That's what he's saying. So this is on Nipsey Hussle's mind the day before, the night before. It's on Black Sam's mind. So much so, it's, there's some sort of issue because they're discussing it. While they're out, supposed to be enjoying the food, the family, the festivities for their cousin's birthday, instead of enjoying that, they're somewhere out in the cut in the corner discussing the politics in the hood about about the person who had a problem with him bringing bringing DJ Khaled over there to the hood. This is all the night before Nipsey Hussle was unalive. So it's on Nipsey's mind. Whatever was going on, whatever the conflict was, and with whomever it was with, it was strong enough to Nipsey anyway that just the night before, instead of enjoying the party and his family, he's going over this with his brother. The politics and man, this dude tripping and whatever the conversation was. As he said, he don't want to get into too much detail. Inside. Foreclose that Tristan Law. That bold three detergent plus fabrics on. I'm not going to let y'all down. I'm here for y'all as well. In the meantime, stay free, people.